Back to domestic action here at Celtic Park and Neil Lennon and his boys are looking for nothing less than victory this afternoon against Dunfermline in the Betfred League Cup here at Paradise. Yes, the players are under no illusion that a victory today would make up for the European disappointment. 
but the treble is something that the supporters have enjoyed so much these past three years. So this trophy is extremely important. Let's remind ourselves how we did it last year. And the touchline cuts it back, it's Griffiths, it's in the back of the net! And Lee Griffiths has given Celtic the lead! It's Patrick Thistle on the attack now, into the box, it's a chance for Matombo, he's just played it into the back of the net! Forrest threads it through to Gamboa, Gamboa into the box, a chance for Christian Gamboa, plays it across, it's in! Moussa Dembele! And here comes Christian Gamboa again into the box, can he deliver another cross? It's Rogic, and it's 3-1! Good play from Encham and a good pass to Rogic, now can he thread that one through to Tierney? Tierney's on the byline, it's a lovely ball from Tierney, and the header claims for a handball, what a chance! And it's there, and it is Lee Griffiths! Sinclair driving towards goal, still Sinclair, puts it across towards Christie. Christie That's goes a penalty! Down. It's going to be a penalty, and that is a penalty, it was a rash challenge from... Bozanic, he steps forward, he shoots, he yeah. scores! Scott Sinclair! Threads it through to Edward, I thought, for the shot, it's blocked only as far as Christie passes it forward and it's a deflection, it's smothered, it must be a goal! And Celtic have scored! Goes towards the corner flag, plays it towards Edward, well, it's a chance, Christie! Oh, oh it's a wonder goal! Yeah. From the wonder shot! Ball's played through to Christie's first touch is excellent. Christie saves. It's in the back of the net. And Ryan Christie has opened the scoring. Yes, it was the makings of Ryan Christie as a Celtic player. He loves this tournament. We'll hear from Ryan a bit later on. He takes his place in the starting 11 this afternoon. Welcome along to Celtic Park with myself, Jerry McCulloch, Simon Donnelly and Kelly Clark. We're looking forward to this one. There has been disappointment around the place, obviously, this week, but Kelly, for the players, I suppose they will just be desperate to get back onto that pitch and show what they can do. Yeah, I think as a footballer, you know, you know when you've let people down and you know when you, you feel like you've maybe let your teammates down and it's one of the most difficult things to deal with, you know. They'll have been so disappointed after the result during the week that they've probably been, you know, raring to get back on the pitch today and start trying to, to make things up to to themselves and to the fans. Yeah, just a word on that, Simon. I mean, you've you've been here, you've played in great games for Celtic, you've played in games where it's been a disappointing outcome. But for the players, they don't like these days where they just have to sit back, they can't do anything about it. Today, they can go back and show these supporters what they're made of. It's probably one of the good things in football, Jerry, that the next game's not too far around the corner. Um, huge disappointment the other night after a fantastic start to the season. Plenty of goals and attacking play. I didn't see the game the other night but obviously after the first leg I thought we'd take care of Kludge but obviously it wasn't to be as I say a huge disappointment for the club but the treble treble has to be defended you know and the fellow will come here today I think they might have a goal so it's another professional performance needs to be Celtic. Let's have a look then at the starting 11 Neil Lennon has made a few tweaks to his starting 11 and we believe he's made a few tweaks to the formation as well uh, the first change is in goal Scott Bain has got that injured finger, so he misses out this afternoon. But Craig Gordon, the very experienced Craig Gordon, will um, take his place in goal. It's then going to be a back three, we believe, of El Hamed, Christopher Julian and Christopher Ayer, with Nier Beaton in a sitting midfield position, behind a four of Mikey Johnson on the right, Callum McGregor and Ryan Christie in the middle, and Ball and Golly on the left. Neil Lennon likes two strikers. He's put two strikers on the pitch this afternoon in the form of Lee Griffiths and Odson Edwards. Um, what do you make of that that team and, and that formation, if indeed we are right, Kelly? I mean, it's very attacking. and We've just spoke about disappointment from during the week and one of the best ways to, to go over that is to go and have fun and score lots of goals. So it's, it's very forward thinking and, you know, I, I fully expect the, the forward six players today to really capitalise against the Defermann backline who you know, we're not expecting we'll be able to match up with them. So, like I said, after the disappointment during the week, I do think that one of the best ways to go over that is to go and score a few goals and have a bit of fun, play with a bit of freedom. And hopefully, I think that formation will set us up to do that today and get the fans cheering. No place for Scott Brown this afternoon. He's played every game this season, so the manager giving him a rest. Simon, what do you make of that, that team lineup? I like it. I like it. I think Mikey Johnson and Christie have 
started the season really well. Uh, to have Callum back in there, creativity in the middle of the park. And I've always said that I like two strikers. And Griffiths on, on his form, he's the best striker for me in the league. Edward just seems to get better and better as well. So I think it's a real potent front two. And I think they'll both score today. Let's hear from the manager then, Neil Lennon, his thoughts on the game with John Ledworth. Neil, today that's the first important step in defence of the Betfred Cup. And how important is it uh, the way the boys go about this this afternoon? Yeah, very important. It's a home tie, which obviously we're very pleased about. Um, we're scoring, free scoring at the minute. Obviously, we've made a few changes as well off the back of you know, the, the amount of games that we've had. So we're looking forward to the game, obviously, after the disappointment on Tuesday. It's important we bounce back and get back on the pitch and do what we're good at. In terms of those changes, obviously the captain drops out today. Is that more about rotation or is there anything more to that? No, he's just having a rest. You know, He's played all the games so far and it's an opportunity with a lot more important games coming up between now and the, you know, the international break to give, give Scott a bit of a breather. And a chance to get more minutes for Christopher Julian. Yeah, it'd be great for him to get another 90 minutes under his belt and hopefully we'll see the best of him as he goes on and um, obviously Bolly's back in, so the two new boys are in and maybe a little change of formation today just to see how we go with the two strikers as well. Today's opponent, Dunfermline, historically one of the bigger clubs in Scotland and so they won't lack any motivation today with a big backing. No, and they've got a good cup pedigree as well and um, you know, watched them against Dundee first game of the season and you know they're quite bright, quite inventive, you know, so... Look, again, it's all about how we approach the game. You know, we haven't started the last two games very well, so looking for a good start today. Well, good luck. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Me, cheers. So Neil Lennon there speaking with uh, John Ledworth just a few minutes ago. Uh, Simon Neil talking there about wanting to start the game well. He clearly feels that that Celtic haven't done that in recent games, and traditionally that's been a feature of of Celtic as a team historically who like to go and attack the team from the from the first whistle. It's obviously an area Neil Lennon thinks we can improve on. Yeah, it's important in games like today as well to get them firm on the back foot as quick as possible. I think he's talking obviously about the Clouds game, middle of the week, and Muddle, I watched Muddle last week, and for the first 20 minutes of that game, it was almost as if it took Muddle to score before Celtic reacted. Certainly was here on flag day and they started really well, so we'll be looking for something similar today, to say, put them firmly on the back foot and build confidence in the game, and also you get the reaction from the fans, you know, on the back of a disappointing result on Tuesday, if they start the game well here today, then the fans will react. Yeah, we'll have a look at that uh, Motherwell game in a, a couple of minutes just to get you into a positive frame of mind before this one. Um, Kelly, I imagine if you're the Dunfermline manager, Stevie Crawford, and the players looking at the team sheet, the two players in the middle of the pitch for Celtic are the ones that you're going to be most afraid of in, an attack, in, in, a, in a creative sense before you even get to Griffiths and Edward. And I'm talking about Callum McGregor and Ryan Christie. Yeah, I think the two of them and, like we said, the Mikey Johnston, Edward, they've all started the season really well. They've all, you know, involved in a lot of goals, um, all of them. So I really do think that this week they'll, they'll maybe try to come up with how to, to play against that. But the quality that these players have, I would be very surprised if, if any plan will work today. Yeah, they've been uh, such prominent players for Celtic uh, this season already, but particularly last season. I was talking about Ryan Christie. We'll hear from him. We've been speaking to Ryan. Um, this week, but it's a it's a competition that he enjoys having played such an important part. Not just scoring the winning goal last year, but this is the competition where he really broke through and got his chance. We've seen that, that memorable goal he scored at, at Murrayfield that really got the fans behind him, and the fans realised, wait a minute, we've got a player in our hands here. Hundred percent. That's that's when he took his chance. You know, a fantastic goal at Murrayfield, and just went from strength to strength. You, the only thing, the only setback for Ryan last year was the, the little injury that he picked yeah. up. You know, and that kind of halted his progress. But boys, he started this season well. You know the fantastic hat trick here. He's got six or seven goals already, and real creativity in there with, with, with Callum as well, who's been fantastic for Celtic over the last three, four seasons. So you look for them to create today and get the ball to the, the front line there with the two who are more than capable of scoring goals, Griffiths and Edward. Yeah, I mean there's goals everywhere on on this pitch. You get Mikey Johnson, as you said, Christie scores, McGregor scores, and that's before we get to the front two because there's a lot of goals in Lee Griffiths and odds on Edward Kelly. Yeah. And you know, Edward on the score sheet again during the week, Griffiths on the score sheet last week at Motherwell, they're both absolutely loving it, you know, so I fully expect chances to be created today and I fully expect them to both probably want to be on that score sheet and different they can to get on that score sheet, but it's exciting, you know, two strikers up front, it's not something that we see very often, so it'll be interesting to see how they link up. I think there was glimpses, the last time that they were on the park together, there was glimpses of it working quite well, so 
it's exciting. It's probably a, a good chance to, to try it out and really see what they can do with it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, a very attacking lineup of that. Uh, there is no doubt. Um, the clues game aside, it's been a fantastic start to the season uh, for Celtic, scoring from all over the pitch. The, the most recent domestic game was that visit to Motherwell. Not the greatest start in the game, that's maybe what Neil Lennon was talking about, but what an outcome in the end. Let's remind ourselves of uh, that great afternoon at Fir Park. John goes ahead of Morgan, puts it to Polworth, he steps inside. So Polworth on the ball, there's plenty of the ball in these early stages, switches it across to Gallagher, Gallagher heads it back to the edge of the area. It's a chance for Motherwell, it's volleyed, and it's in the back of the net for Donnelly, it took a bounce just in front of Scott Bain, and with 12 minutes gone, it's the home side to have taken the lead. James Forrest takes up the play, Ayer strides forward as well, the ball knocked through, it's a chance for Ayer to equalise, and Christopher Ayer has equalised, a wonderful goal from the Norwegian, his third goal in Celtic colours, he started the move, he finished the move, it's one apiece here at Fir Park. Waiting for the referee's whistle, he steps up, he shoots, and he scores, Lee Griffiths has scored again! Well, we know he can do it, we know he does do it, he gets applause from the fans, he gets applause from his manager. What a goal, Celtic lead here by two goals to one. Ball and Golly flips it forward to Morgan, goes for the return, he's into the box, Ball and Golly cuts it back to Forrest, Forrest on his left foot, and James Forrest again! Oh, another piece of magic from the winger, it was the tightest of angles, there was plenty of other world players there, but he steered it beyond Gillespie, who was rooted to the spot, and Celtic, with 65 minutes gone, now lead here by three goals to one. Ball goal, he stabs that one forward to Incham, Incham again just busts beyond his man, wonderful skill again from the Frenchman, down this left-hand side, flicks it across, looking for Odson Edwards, Edwards, Oh, that is absolutely wonderful! That's a goal made in France and executed in Lanarkshire. Incham's skill was breathtaking. Edwards' first touch was exquisite and his finish was out of this world. 4-1 Celtic. But here comes Celtic again, a chance perhaps for goal number five. It's Watson Edward. Could he get his second in the afternoon? Watson Edward, he goes down, it must be a penalty. And indeed, it is a penalty. Well, when he took the penalty, the other week there, he played it to the goalkeeper's left-hand side. Where will he put it this afternoon? Ryan Christie with the chance to make it 5-1 to Celtic. He composes himself, he steps up, and he fires it high into the roof of the net, the right-hand side. The keeper did not have a chance, a wonderful set-piece. And with five minutes remaining, it's another five-star showing for Celtic. On in the game as the ball's floated across the far side, it's headed. Chance for Motherwell, and it's blasted into the back of it, and indeed it is Donnelly with his second goal of the afternoon. So, barring the first and last goal in that game, Kelly, that's the kind of performance that these players and these supporters will be looking for this afternoon. Yeah, like Simon said, the start wasn't great, and it was probably quite frustrating to lose that goal at the end, but the, the part in between, you know, they looked dangerous every time. There was a number of players put in an outstanding performance, so Cham played excellent the last weekend. Um, and it was it was a joy to watch in between that slow start and conceding that frustrating goal at the end. It was it was another eye pleasing performance similar to here on Flag Day in the first game of the season. The League Cup's fascinating, Simon, because traditionally it's always been the lesser of the two cups, the with the Scottish yeah. Cup being sort of a bit more glamorous, but because of the fans being used to winning trebles, it's become perhaps even more important because it's it's part of that that treble. Um, it's, it's a competition that the fans have really enjoyed and I, I like the fact that, the, that it's now all played out before Christmas as well. I didn't like it when it was when they spread it out across a season. There's something about the tournament that I, that I really like now. Yeah, and back, back in my day it was the same. You know, it was always good to get a trophy in the cabinet early on uh, and we've done that over the last three seasons. Uh, but just because we've done the treble treble it just adds a wee bit more to it. I think teams, especially in the cup competitions, will fancy their chances, you know, and trying to take the scalp and be the, the team that upsets that continuous winning for Celtic. So that's why it's such an important day and we've got to be professional with it. You know, we've got to treat it really professional, which over the last nine trophies they have done. Uh, but I firmly expect a, a comfortable win. I think there's too much firepower in the Celtic team today. And they've started, obviously, scoring a lot of goals since the start of the season. It's an incredible uh, cup start that Celtic have, Kelly, since... Well, I wouldn't want to mention the, the game at Hamden, but 
was the last time we lost a cup game, but 26 cup ties. Celtic have had consecutive victories since then. It's an unbelievable record. Yeah, that's uh, your word is right. It's unbelievable, you know, and it's something that they'll they'll not want to lose. You know, I'd be surprised if they haven't mentioned this week that that's how long that they've gone without being beaten in the cup because to keep that going and to keep building up is it's a it's a real motivation, but it just shows the dominance in the cups. You know, the dominance in in the country, but especially the dominance in the cups. Yeah, we're not talking unbeaten because, of course, you can't draw a cup game. None of those games went to replays. That was 26 victories in that uh, treble, treble hall. Well, we saw from our little goals clip earlier on that last season's League Cup, from a Celtic perspective, was pretty much dominated by one man. The man, of course, I'm talking about is Ryan Christie. So who better to catch up with for a chat about this game through the week? He spoke to Ryan Rowe. First of all, had a couple of days to assess the result against Cluj in the cold light of day. How are you guys feeling about it now? Um, obviously still disappointed. Um, you know, I think straight after the game there's still a lot of emotion and you know, you feel um, very kind of frustrated and angry at everything but obviously like you said, once you kind of calm down you look back and obviously there's still disappointment there but you know, it's not a terminal kind of thing. We need to kind of move on and um, the more important thing now is we take our opportunity what's left and that's Europa League. So. Um, now we just have to put it behind us, learn from it as well, hopefully. Um, and then moving forward, hopefully take that into the next few games. Talking about moving on, it will be AIK Stockholm. So again, it won't be an easy game. It's the Swedish champions, so it's almost a, there's no motivation needed extra. Yeah, um, to be fair, I think when it, it comes to Europe, especially when you're you know, in the kind of playoff stages to get into Champions League or Europa League, it's, you're going to be facing a, a good team. That's just the... And um, that's just how it goes. So, um, yeah, we know that it'll be tough. Um, hopefully we can take some lessons, obviously, from midweek into that tie. Um, yeah, and like you said, we're, we certainly need more, no more uh, motivation to, to try and get through to the group stages. So the game against Dunfermline, when teams from lower down the leagues come to Celtic Park, they're always going to be up for it. So, again, there's no rest on laurels on Saturday. Yeah, that's it. Um, something we've, you know, we're used to now for... Um, a good few seasons that um, you know the games are just relentless, especially at the the start of the season. But um, you know we're we're more than fit, and we've got a, a good enough squad of, of boys to um, to hopefully kind of come and put on another good performance. Um, I think the most important thing is to bounce back from from me. That's what everybody wants to do. So you know again, I think everyone's desperate to play just because you want to play that next game after a frustrating defeat. And the League Cup's been quite kind to you. you scored that. Rocket against Hearts, and then of course the win in the League Cup final. I mean, they must be up there with some of your best moments in the Celtic jersey. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think that you know, the Hearts one was nice because it was probably the, the first game where I properly broke into the team and managed to stay in after that. Um, and then the kind of final kind of spoke for itself. If, you know, like I said before, how funny football works out when I look back at that game, I just feel like it was meant to be me scoring the winner. So, um, yeah, it was nice. Um, you know, the important thing is hopefully we can go and do something similar again this season and that starts with you know, progressing through these rounds. Talking about your own form, you know, obviously you broke into the team last season and then you, you had the injury, so now eight goals in eight games, is that, that's just been sitting there waiting for months to come out? Yeah, in a way I would say so. I think, you know, I've, again I've mentioned about when I was injured how kind of frustrating I found it and um, just been desperate to kind of get back and getting about it and I think the way I kind of came in in pre-season it helped me because I had that full kind of determination and focus to really push on this season and, and make up for what I missed at the end of last season so um, you know for the moment I kind of came in the door after the summer I was looking forward to the first few games and um, hopefully now we can just keep kicking on. Do you feel you're at the top of your game? I know it's still early in the season but it's the form's been great. Yeah look it's, um, you know, it's nice to score goals. Um, you know, win, um, win games and link up and to be fair I think the boys going forward are you know, scoring a, a, a heap, heap of goals right now so you know, that's definitely something we need to hopefully continue doing. Um, I'm loving it, the position I'm kind of playing in right now and the, the kind of pressure that's on my shoulders to score and create goals um, is something I hopefully can keep thriving upon. We've spoken already about how important Ryan was in this competition uh, last season, in all competitions last season, and he's shown this season already, Simon, that that wasn't a flash in the pan with his eight goals already. You could argue he's the best player in the country just now. Definitely. 
Yeah, he's on top form. Uh, and as I say, the only thing that's interrupted him since he came into the team last year was the injury. Uh, he's come back and, as I say, top class. He's here at St Johnson get a fantastic hat-trick. I think he's got eight goals so early in the season. But it's creativity as well, you know, he can set people up. But fantastic left foot, some really good goals there that we watched. And fantastic, important player for this season. Neil Lennon spoke to me last week in an interview, Kelly, and he was talking about how sometimes Celtic try and score the perfect goal all the time. And he said, but by the nature of it, every goal's perfect. As long as the ball crosses a line, it's a perfect goal. The thing about Ryan is, he's so confident in shooting from anywhere outside the box that, that it's almost like whenever he gets the ball, there's a goal on. Yeah, I think, you know, if you can if you can get his head up in a, space, uh, a few yards of space outside the box, then I wouldn't want to be the goalkeeper because the chances are right now you're picking the ball at the back of the net, you know. He's, he's just playing with such a confidence as well and no matter where he picks the ball up, like we said, he's either he's either creating something or he, he's, he's taking the shot on. He's not scared to shoot from anywhere, you know. Maybe with one of the goals against St. Johnson, he was a bit lucky. The, the goalkeeper was a... He may, maybe threw it in his net a wee bit, but you know that's him just getting his head up early and taking on that shot. And, and if you don't shoot, you don't score. And it, it looks like he's been given that freedom to shoot from anywhere, and he's finding the back of the net with it. And it just goes to show you never know what's round the corner. I mean, Ryan himself was on loan at Aberdeen, and then Musa Dembele leaves Celtic. Brendan Rodgers doesn't have time to get a replacement, and he says, "Well, Ryan Christie's there. I'll give him a chance." And he's and he really has taken it. That's football, you know. It, Teams like Celtic squads, as big as Celtics every year, you're looking for a break, but the most important thing is you take it when, you, when it comes along and Ryan's done that. As indeed, what a player we're looking for him to do the business this afternoon. That's it from myself, uh, Kelly and Simon. We'll be back at half time to analyse the first 45 minutes uh, as we wait on teams coming out, though. Let's go to your commentators who this afternoon are Tom Boyd and Jerry McDade. My thanks to Jerry, Simon and Kelly. Hail, hail and a very warm welcome to Paradise this afternoon as Celtic look to defend the first trophy of the season, the Betfred League Cup. Neil Lennon putting out a strong side against Infernal Athletic. This game, of course, a reprise of the 2006 Scottish League Cup final, which was Neil's first trophy as a captain. And a man who's with me in commentary today who knows a little bit more about lifting trophies than I do, Mr Tom Boyd. Tom, good afternoon, how are you? Good afternoon, Jerry. Yes, very well now, uh, now that uh, I think Chase is out of my system. Yes. Uh, it'll take a while, um, but a, a victory today will certainly go away, uh, a long way to trying to ease the pain of what that result was. I think I hit everybody. I think how we've been playing since the start of the season, having a 1 1 draw away from home, coming here to Celtic Park, and uh, there were so many mitigating circumstances of why we didn't win that game, uh, and I think that just hurt us a lot. But today, now we're here, back, beautiful sunny day at Paradise. Uh, and we're here to see the Hoops play once again. This, and a very attacking lineup for Celtic. It goes with Craig Gordon in goal, El Hamid, Julian, and Ayer across the back. Beaton just in front of them. Johnson, uh, Callum McGregor, Ryan Christie, and Bolling Golly playing in midfield as well. And Griffiths and Eduard up front. What do you make of that lineup, Tom? Yes, and I think for quite a few people, would, would, you know, I think we've seen Neil play uh, the two strikers against uh, uh, the, the Estonian team. And we, and we liked that and we thought that was a thing that Neil would try to play but obviously an opportunity to play here today but no matter what in terms of attacking sense we've been fine we're scoring goals for fun uh, in the attacking sense so no matter what we do I think the support here a lot of us are all old school and still like the two strikers but you know we've been trying to be educated down the years uh, and that's still worked in terms of the one that we've had uh, and the, the league campaigns uh, and obviously other games in European football that we've just had the one and it's been working so far in terms of attacking system so we've got, we've got to go and play with that we certainly like it you would think that team there would be full of goals and loaded with goals yeah. uh, and the attacking sense and how many players are playing in that attacking sense and what they've got so I hope we expect a, a few goals from the hooks today Strong bench as well Tom Connor Hazard Isuf Bayou Hayes Morgan Schved Charm, Forrest, there's a selection there you can bring on at any point. Well, I've got to any shadow of a doubt. That, hopefully, we'll not be talking about that for a long time, and uh, you know, certain those circumstances that uh, we need more substitutes will be for tactical reasons for the manager bringing on players, maybe players who haven't played for a while or something like you know, maybe just get a wee rest. But you know, certainly, we're looking forward to you know, what's seen this team, seeing how they develop. Uh, I don't know if it'll be an indication how Neil will want to play uh, as it develops, but we'll see how it goes. We'll have a wee look, see. Uh, if it tweaks in it and you know in a game like this today it's sometimes difficult to work out formations because we usually constantly on the attack uh, and constant great possession uh, it, it certainly moves uh, interchanges and, and I think that's been key to the certainly a lot of the attacking ability was 
it's been very interchangeable. And the players don't just stick to their game plan, you know, they can move in about and then the players are accommodating and that's why we've been causing defences so many problems. How would you expect Dunfermline to come here and defend? It looks as if they've got five defenders out on the pitch. Uh, that would be an indication perhaps that they're going to try and lock the door. Yes, um, you know, Dunfermline have started quite well uh, in the championship, but uh, you know, with it, this is a, a far tougher test for them. Uh, and I would imagine, given you know the rest of the how the rest of the teams have come here and played, uh, you know, to come and play an open game, an open, expansive game of football with the players that they have against the players that we've got, uh, you would almost think it was suicidal. So we'll hopefully, uh, you know, have a dominance that we want, uh, and uh, the family will be getting pegged back because of the bid for play. We've got a beautiful day here at Celtic Park, yeah. so. Hopefully the, the football on display will cheer up the supporters after our disappointment on Tuesday. And Ryan Christie, 60th appearance today for the Celts, 21 goals so far. A lot of people are already saying, even at this early juncture of the season, Tom, that he will be the player of the year. You must have been impressed with this one. I've got a lot of, I know a lot of supporters in there who have taken him to be the top goal scorer this season, which is an amazing Doesn't it? Uh, stat, you know, given that he is uh, uh, almost a deep line. I know he joins in the attack quite often. But he is a, a midfielder, but he is an attacking midfielder. I mean, started the season off in a great form, and uh, uh, early on, and the early indications, touch wood, that he doesn't get any of what he had last year to him, so he can play and get a full season under his belt, uh, and he will be a massive benefit to this team in the position. And it gives us competition for when we have Tom Rodgick coming back in those same areas. So it's only good that we have Sunder Ryan, who is just never stopping in terms of his running ability uh, and obviously he's got a hell of a lot of skill with that as well and we think back to that semi-final last year in this competition against Hearts and this is a special tournament from Ryan because that really was the game that, that really turned around his Celtic career it was a game changer and I think it obviously opened the eyes of a lot of supporters but a lot of supporters didn't see that because Ryan wasn't playing so I think it opened the eyes of the manager Brendan at that time as well to see what kind of player that Ryan was and, in, and, and sometimes fate works for you that, you know, the, we're struggling along and then uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan came in in the second half and seen the change it makes and he took his opportunity. When players get opportunities, they need to try and take it. Uh, and obviously that's what Ryan had done and there's the example of it, that you get your starts and you can go on to strength and strength. Callum McGregor leading Celtic out onto the park. What an honour for him again to captain the side, especially to come out onto this paradise pitch. And again, a player who's been vital for us in the last couple of seasons. Yes, and uh, obviously back in his, his central area, where, uh, I think Callum has been immense and he'll be wanting to play and, and dictate the play. Uh, obviously for Neil when having to accommodate himself playing in the left-back position. This is where Callum is best and that's where he wants to be and everybody knows that, the manager knows that. It just because of the players that he had that available at his disposal that, uh, that that wasn't the case in Tuesday. So today, Callum, great honour that it is going out uh, and captain on this side as, as I did on many occasions. So I know what the responsibility is and a few words of wisdom that he'll be given to the, the players, uh, the last person to give to the players, the team just before the, the kickoff. The huddle. Uh, volleyball and golly on the left flank in the midfield. What do you make of that? Yes, um, obviously coming in, a uh, kind of game that you'd like to. Eat get his confidence kind of back he's uh, obviously uh, you know a lot of players think he's you know in terms of the stature of how he's come in done well in a lot of games been looked a little bit nervy in some of the bigger games uh, but on this kind of occasion uh, I imagine he'd be released from the and I don't think we'll be defending too much so again it'll be his attacking abilities here today and adding a little bit of weight to the attack noise for the boys indeed as they go into the familiar huddle captain Callum McGregor expressing his views, geeing up the hoops for this game, not to be taken for granted, trying to see just how Dunferma appear to be lining up. It doesn't look as if it's a back four and a fairly packed midfield with a lone striker top. Yeah, just uh, early indications are certainly that. Um, I, I certainly don't think they'll be playing with two uh, strikers and, uh, and just yet. Four, five, one will probably be the, the formation for themselves. Uh, and as you say, the formation for 